All right, students, welcome to our latest installment of Chapter 9's discussion on molecular geometry and bonding theories. Before I start, I wanted to post a link to a humorous video that I've placed on my YouTube channel some time ago. It's a video of me doing a, a stunt where I hang on top of a car. I was 17 years old. It's really stupid. I counsel you not to try it. And in fact, you don't even have to watch it. But if you want, I'll post a, a link here that you can click and, and watch it. It's really just for the purpose of being funny. With that said, let's get back to business. After this lecture or series of presentations, you guys should be able to do the following. Indicate how atomic orbitals overlap when atoms form bonds, be able to identify the number of sigma and pi bonds in a molecule, determine an atom's hybridization and bond angles, explain what hybrid orbitals are, be able to draw molecular orbitals and molecular orbital energy diagrams for simple diatomic molecules, and be able to calculate bond orders. That's the lineup. Let's get started. According to a model called valence bond theory, covalent bonds form when orbitals overlap. This is shown in the following figures, which depict the formations of hydrogen gas, H2, HCl, and Cl2. So when you've got two different hydrogen atoms, each of them has a 1s atomic orbital. When they get together to form H2, which is hydrogen gas, those atomic orbitals overlap and form kind of some merged mighty orbital that constitutes what is now known as a molecular orbital for the molecule of H2. Similarly, HCl forms when hydrogen, a single atom of hydrogen, takes its atomic orbital, its 1s orbital, and chlorine takes one of its 3p orbitals, and then they overlap. Oh, and that forms a new molecular orbital that's, once again, sort of formed by these two atomic orbitals merging to form a new molecular orbital. Hopefully, you can sort of distinguish between the two atomic orbitals or orbitals that surround individual atoms. But when they get together, two atoms to form a bond, we form a new big blah orbital called a molecular orbital. An analogous thing happens when two chlorine atoms orbitals overlap to form Cl2 or chlorine gas. Remember, we merge two atomic orbitals and we get a mighty molecular orbital. Universe! Constructicons! Merge into Devastator! <laughs> That brings us to a problem. I want you to draw a picture showing how two p orbitals on two different atoms can overlap to make a sigma bond. I'm not going to answer this for you because essentially it looks just like the Cl2 uh, orbital diagram that I just showed you. But if you'd like, I invite you to try it on your own. OK, let's go on. Just so you know, each single bond in a molecule is called a sigma bond. All double bonds contain one sigma and one pi bond. Triple bonds, in contrast, each contain one sigma and two pi bonds. We can see that exemplified in these examples. If I've got a molecule of methane, carbon with four hydrogens around it, that molecule has four individual sigma bonds. Each of these carbon-hydrogen bonds is a sigma bond, because they're all single bonds. Now, by comparison, this molecule, called formaldehyde, has a carbon-oxygen double bond and then two separate carbon-hydrogen single bonds. In this molecule, the carbon-oxygen double bond contains one sigma and one pi bond, while each carbon-hydrogen bond is a sigma bond. Therefore, this molecule in toto has three sigma bonds and one pi bond. And just by way of review, the bond angles around methane's uh, hydrogen should be 109.5, while the bond angles around each of these groups around the central carbon should be about 120. Let's compare this molecule called acetylene. It's got a carbon-carbon triple bond. Remember, triple bond, I'll hold up three fingers, contains one sigma and two pi bonds, while these carbon-hydrogen single bonds each constitute a separate sigma bond. We can therefore say that this molecule in total has three sigma bonds and two pi bonds. And by way of review, the bond angle here should be about 180 degrees, with it being totally linear. Another piece of info you should know. Sigma bonds are stronger than pi bonds, for reasons that I'll explain in a little bit. That takes us to a gorgeous problem. I want you to consider the Lewis structure of glycine shown here, which happens to be the simplest amino acid. What are the approximate bond angles around the two carbon atoms? How many total sigma bonds are there in glycine? And how many total pi bonds are there in glycine? Now, I invite you to try this on your own. I'm going to post a link here to a separate video in which I answer it. 
that you're welcome to click on if you wish. Separately, I'd like you to consider this question. Draw the Lewis structures for ethane, ethylene, and acetylene, whose formulas are all given there. Then indicate how many sigma and pi bonds there are in each of those molecules. Now I'm going to introduce you to a new topic, atoms orbital hybridization. OK, so what in the world is orbital hybridization? Well, generically speaking, the word hybridization, or to hybridize something, means to take two different things and then kind of meld or blend them together. For example, in a hybrid car, you have a regular fossil fuel combustion engine combined or hybridized with a battery powered engine. Uh, similarly, if you hybridize or meld together science and art, you get sci-fart. And if you meld together a crap and face, you get crap face. Okay, well, I don't know if those are real things, but they happen to be nicknames I give to my kids. In any event, when atoms want to get together to form bonds, often they have to take their individual atomic orbitals and then meld them with each other. For example, s orbitals and p orbitals kind of melding with each other to form brand new orbitals that have the desired shapes necessary to achieve bonding. I'll go into later depth on this uh, in a subsequent video. For now, I want you to have the ability to look at any atom in a uh, Lewis structure and tell me what that atom's hybridization is. Now, I realize that at first, you might not have a clue what that actually means, but don't worry. In my next video, I'll explain to you what is actually going on. So in effect, I'm sort of teaching you how to do the thing, and then afterwards, I'm going to teach you what the thing means. So to determine an atom's orbital hybridization, you have to count the number of things around the atom. And when I say things, by the way, I'm talking about either another atom or a lone electron pair. Once you count the number of things around the atom, you then memorize the following. If the atom has two things around it, then it is S, P. If it has three things around it, then it is S, P2. If it has four things around it, then it's S, P3. And hopefully that makes sense. We got that memorized. Let's take a look at some examples. What is the hybridization for each of the indicated atoms? Here I've got a carbon that has a hydrogen, 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 hydrogen. That is four things. So its hybridization is S, P3. Over here I've got a carbon that is stuck to an oxygen, hydrogen, and a hydrogen. That is three things. Now some people might be scared that this is a carbon-oxygen double bond and that that somehow changes the number of things around that carbon. It doesn't. I don't give a crud if it's a double bond, triple bond, quadruple bond, quin, duply, uply, tuply bond. It doesn't matter. I'm only counting the number of things around the central carbon. It's got an oxygen up top, hydrogen to the left, hydrogen to the right. That is three things. Therefore, its hybridization is sp2. Now I'll look at this oxygen. The oxygen has a carbon down bottom, a set of lone pairs to the left, and a set of lone pairs to the right. Yes, lone pairs do count as a thing. That is three things, so its hybridization is also sp2. Over here, I've got a carbon that has a hydrogen to the left, and a carbon to the right. Once again, the fact that it has a triple bond there, completely irrelevant when counting the number of things. It has two things, therefore its hybridization is sp. And I have to make sure that I put down the correct finger so that I'm not accidentally giving you an obscene gesture. Now by way of review, let's see if you can determine the individual bond angles and geometries around each of the central atoms in these molecules. I'll put a link here to review if you guys wish to. That takes us to a beautiful lecture question. I want you to determine the hybridization of each atom in the following molecule. And for the fun of it, it might be beneficial to see if you can determine all of the individual bond angles in this atom as well. Now, I'm not going to do this one here, but I'll post a link to a separate video in which I do answer this question if you wish to watch it.